Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. Since I was a baby, my family would spend two weeks out of the year in Ufford, Ontario. The campsite was Forest Rock Camp, and our cabin was placed about 50 feet in the bush from other cabins. One night at about 2 a.m., I was awakened by a sneeze, a very deep sneeze, and a garbage, skunk, rotten meat, wet dog smell. My bed was about eight feet from my window. As it was a very hot night, my mother opened the window. What I'm about to tell you is the truth. I swear on my life. Something walked to my window, almost totally blocking the moonlight, and looked in. It had a head the size of a cow, but looked like a monkey, a man monkey. I remember whimpering and my mother getting up. It must have heard her, for it disappeared. I told her what I saw, and she laughed and said it was a deer or a cow. I never forgot that night. Now, years later, when I talked to my father, whose parents owned the camp, he told me something I'll never forget. I asked him what scared him the most in life. What he told me astonished me. When he was young, him and his brother Roy were picking dewworms on the edge of a thick bush. Dad says he heard a grunt and some rustling, so he shone his lantern into the bush. And a giant, hairy man walked away. Sorry, but that's all I could get out of him. He was trembling, telling the story. In the morning, it looked like a small car had plowed through the brush and trees. Footprints were visible. It occurred at 2 a.m. It was very hot, and there was moonlight. The environment was thick pine forest on Three Mile Lake. There were not many people in the camp at that time. On to the next one. Near Trenton in Ontario, I was seven or eight years old. My sister and I used to ice skate on a pond in the forest behind the apartment building we used to live in. It was about a five-minute walk down a well-beaten path. We had just finished skating, which usually lasted about two hours and was something we did first thing in the morning around 9 a.m. So around 11 a.m., we started to head back home for lunch. I heard some movement in the bushes and just managed to catch a glimpse of something large and brown. It was quite a distance away. I'd say at least 100 to 150 feet off the path. We had both figured it was just our next door neighbor heading into the forest, a common occurrence. When we neared the split in the path leading to our backyard, the other direction leading to the next door neighbor's yard, I noticed a large human-like footprint in the snow, although it was much bigger than any human footprint I'd ever seen. The tracks led from the neighbor's backyard into the forest off the path in the direction I'd seen the figure. From there, things get a tad fuzzy, but I recall as soon as I saw that footprint, I got a sinking feeling and was quite afraid. I remember my sister and I both ran across the backyard and into the apartment, although we never talked about it. To this day, my sister and I have never spoke about that day. The only other person I know that was there was my sister. As stated before, she and I were just returning from ice skating. It was mid-morning, approximately 11 a.m. The snow was wet, like it had just rained, although I can't remember if it did or not. The sky was gray and clouded, the land where the figure was spotted was mainly deciduous forest. A frozen pond was located approximately 50 feet to the west, a creek approximately 200 feet to the east. The terrain itself was fairly rocky, yet fairly flat. On to the next one. I had a terrible encounter in Texas many years back. 
I was new to the area, but was looking to make friends. And I made some with a few of the locals at the nearby town. They invited me to go fishing with them one afternoon at what they said was a prime location. Well, fishing was something I was always more than a little good at if I do say so myself. I got my supplies and my equipment together and went to meet them where they said to. The day was nice, bright and clear too. They were right about how good the location was for fishing. I caught all the fish I wanted to. By the time it started getting late, I decided it was a fine time for me to call it a day. So did the others. We were back at our truck and the others already started driving home with me as the only one left at the site, still in the process of getting ready to leave. It's because I took too long getting everything back on the truck that I was still outside my truck when the last of them drove off, but I also stayed longer for a separate reason. The sun was setting, and the view of all the surroundings was a real sight to see. It was the first time I went out there, and it felt so relaxing in that moment. I wasn't really in any kind of rush to hurry up and head on out. Instead, I spent some time there by myself to enjoy it all. When I was good and ready to go, I was about to get into my truck, but that's when I heard something moving around in the nearby woods. I could have left, but I stuck around because whatever was making all that noise in the woods got my attention and I was wondering what I'd see. I waited there, but the noises stopped. So I decided it was high time to go ahead and leave, but took one last look back at the woods, just in time to see a rock come flying out at me from over there. It didn't hit me, but it made a loud noise when it hit my truck. I went over to survey the damage done to my vehicle and saw there was a big dent in it. That made me real mad and I turned toward the woods because I wanted to put a dent in the person who threw that rock. Looking back on that moment now, I know I should have just left. The others were long gone and I was the only one still there. But I was mad and I was shouting into the woods looking at where I thought the rock came from. Then another rock came flying out, coming close again, but not hitting me, instead going past me and hitting my truck again, making another dent. I was so mad after seeing those two dents, I started walking toward the trees, cussing and hollering and calling the person a coward. Among other much stronger terms and choice words, that I use, but that don't bear repeating, because someone was hiding in the dark like that and throwing rocks at me. I took a breath before I was about to start shouting again, but I remember noticing how everything all around me got all quiet, except for me. There was nothing out there making any kind of noise at all. Still, that was more like something I noticed and thought about only for a quick second before starting up again and walking up closer to the trees. When I got close, I heard a lot of noise start coming from some of the bushes. I looked there and saw something humongous stand up. I'm over six feet tall. What I saw was at least three feet taller than me and was so wide that you probably could fit two or maybe even three people. Well, at least more than one person, I guarantee it standing there side by side in between the distance from one of its shoulders to the other. When I saw that, I had no earthly idea anymore as to what I was up against. Standing like that, it was maybe 800 or more pounds of muscle and hair. It had a posture that made it look as if it was kind of leaning towards me. Its arms looked to be very strong. When you talk about somebody being strong, you might say that his arms were as thick as an ordinary person's leg. Well, that thing must have been much stronger than that because its arms were as thick as small trees. I couldn't see it before because it was hiding behind those bushes, but I could see all that about it now. Now that it was standing up ahead of me, 
and looking right at me. To be clear, it was so tall that it was actually looking down at me. It started swaying or shifting left and right, and I thought I could hear it breathing. The breathing sounded to me like it was inhaling and exhaling very fast and making all these harsh, gruff breathing noises. Everything about that situation had changed for me. It was one thing when I thought it was somebody out throwing rocks at me. I figured at least I'd have a chance against a person. But I didn't think I could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that humongous thing I was now looking at. Even though it was getting darker out, I could see enough of it that I knew I didn't want to get any closer. Also, I got the feeling that it was very agitated and didn't like me being as close as I was. I felt that there was some kind of a warning being given. Something like that kind of warning an animal gives you when it feels you're getting too close to it. And it wants you to back off fast. At that moment, I couldn't back off all that fast because I was standing there in shock at what I was seeing. My standing there like that and staying where I was probably agitated it some more though. It started making the breathing noises even faster, and I came to my senses enough to start backing away to my truck. When I got back far enough, it looked like it stopped swaying, and it didn't keep moving the way it was before. I couldn't hear it making any more breathing noises from where I backed away to. What I was looking at didn't move, but I heard loud noises start coming from nearby that sounded like a bunch of of heavy branches or small trees being snapped in half. That made me think there was at least more than one of them out there. Without thinking twice about it, I turned around and ran back to my truck the fastest I possibly could. I got into the driver's seat and looked back in time to see that it followed me, but it didn't run straight at me. It ran to the back and grabbed the truck before I could understand what was going on. It's going and grabbing the truck wasn't something I expected. That act took me by surprise, so much that I turned around to get as good a look as I could from my seat, to try to see just what was going on. I didn't understand why it went over there or what it was trying to do by going to the back. If it was trying to get to me, it should have come after me where I was, since it would have seen me getting into the driver's seat. The next thing I knew, it started shaking the truck hard. That did it. I wasn't sticking around there for anything else to happen. I slammed my foot on the pedal, pushing it all the way down to get out of there the fastest I could. While driving away, I looked back at it and saw it was standing there in the same place. It wasn't coming to get me. It also looked to be holding something now. Because I was looking at it and not where I was going, I ended up driving right off the path. I would have to stop, back up, and look at where I was going in order to write that. I looked behind me to start backing up and also to see where it was and what it was doing. I didn't want to take the risk of backing up into it in case it started coming closer. What I saw was that it wasn't coming any closer and that it was still holding something, but it started heading back to the woods. It turned out that there was another one out there after all. While the first one was walking back, the second one came running out of the woods and ran right up to it. The second one looked smaller than the first, but was still much bigger than anyone I have ever laid eyes on. It looked like it tried to get at whatever the first one was holding, but the first one wouldn't let it, and the second one backed off a little. They both moved back into the woods together while I couldn't see them anymore. I knew the first one took something from the back of my truck. But looking at the size of the two of them together, I wasn't about to get out and go find out what it was that it took. I drove back onto the path and even though both of them were gone, as far as I could tell, I drove out of there in a hurry, still worked up and scared as if there was still something meaning to come back out and chase me again. When I got home, I surveyed the damage done to my truck. Despite all that shaking, the truck wasn't really all too badly damaged in the way that I thought it would be. 
The rocks it threw at the beginning of it all did cause damage, but to my surprise, there was nothing as bad as what I was expecting done to the back, at least from that time when it was shaking the truck. I found out what it took, though. It must have been after the fish, because the only thing missing was the fishing cooler with all the fish I caught that day. All that shaking must have been from when it was going for them. I got to think about how in the world it could even know that the fish were in there. With the way I handled the fish and took care of my things, there shouldn't have been any smell coming from the fishing cooler. It could be that it spent some time watching us from the woods earlier that day. Maybe it saw people fishing enough times in the past to know we'd be catching and keeping the fish somewhere nearby. Maybe it had done this kind of thing before to someone else and if it turned out that it did take fish and fishing coolers from other people before, then it already knew what to look for and what to grab. Regardless of why it did what it did, I didn't go out there again with the boys. Anytime we all went fishing together, it always had to be to some other place. If I was going to be going along with them, that was a hard one to explain. So I always had to come up with a reason why I couldn't go, and because of that, it wasn't all too often that we'd all be out fishing together, because they mostly wanted to go only to that location. It was still the prime fishing spot for them. I didn't tell them what happened to me. I was new to the area, and I was looking to make friends, so I couldn't let them go thinking that the new guy wasn't right in the head. If I told them or anyone else anything about what happened, I couldn't rightly expect to make any friends at all. It would have been worse if word of it got around and came back to where I was working, with that maybe going on to put my job at risk with the folks who hired me. Those reasons were enough for me to not go around saying anything about it to anyone. I did try to find out about the experiences they had there in the past, but without making it clear to them that something had happened to me. They never had any kind of trouble out there, like what happened to me. I think the differences between my time out there and theirs is that they were always in a group, and none of them rode by themselves. I was the only one who brought my own vehicle separate from the rest, and with no one riding with me, I then dawdled there to the point of being alone for a while, just about until when it was getting dark out. It could be that it felt bolder on seeing that I was by myself. With how big it was, it could have taken the fish whenever it wanted and done whatever it wanted. But it was slinking around and hiding in the woods like that, throwing those rocks. I have no clue why it threw those rocks at me. I've thought it over plenty of times over the years, and I've come up with the following line of reasoning. I tend to think I'm onto something with it. Maybe it was trying to get me to clear out by throwing those rocks. I think it would be something like how people throw rocks and other things at or near coyotes, crows, raccoons, and other animals they want to scare off. The rocks made loud noises when they hit the truck, which is just the kind of thing that would work for scaring off smaller animals in general. Maybe it was just trying to scare me off with the rocks and it didn't understand what my truck meant to me. Maybe, in addition to that, it was after the fish all along and thought I'd run away and leave the fish there so it could take them without all that much effort and without my ever seeing it. Whatever the case, I think it didn't like my going up closer to it in the way that I did. Maybe it figured it didn't work out trying to get rid of me by throwing rocks since I just about ended up trying to walk right up to it. It could have figured that maybe its first method wasn't working, and I had seen it anyway by then, so it might as well get up, chase me off, and go down to my truck, where it could then get the fish while it was at it. Of course, this all just made me speculate about it, but it did leave me alone after it took the fish. I don't expect that I'll ever truly know the real reasons behind it all. But, as I said, I tend to think that I may be on to something and that I just may be correct in how I'm reasoning out what happened to me back then on that day. There are just so many possibilities for it, 
so many that I speculated about since that time. But there's one thing I can say I'm glad for. As much as it didn't fit well with me back at that time, that it went and damaged my truck and stole both my fish and the fishing cooler that I stored them in, at least it went after the fish and not after me. In the end, I recognized that if I didn't have any fish, then maybe things would have turned out in a much different and much worse way for me than they did. If you have an encounter you would like to share, you can reach me by submitting it to the email in the description box down below. Also, if you would like to send in a physical letter of your encounter or any fan mail, I also have a PO box, which you can find in the description box down below. I love just hearing from all of you, so those options are available if you ever feel like reaching me. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!